Shelley, thanks very much. I'm deeply appreciative of this honor. It's a Lifetime Achievement Award. Feels a little like a Tom Brady, it's time to go time award. But when I look at all the wonderful people that are being recognized tonight, Hazel Dukes, Betsy Gottbaum, I'm very honored to be in their presence. And I do want to thank city and state editors, uh, again, my friend Shelley Mayer, all the many friends and colleagues that I've made over all of these years. Shelley outlined some of the positions I've had in public office from the Rye City Council through the State Assembly and the State Senate, now in this position. And I'm very appreciative as well of an outstanding team of professionals that I have around me that help runs Westchester County government. 34 years ago this month, in January, I completed my first month in public office as a city councilman in a small city of 15,000 people, small suburban city. I know that I'm not going to be here 34 years from tonight. So what do I reflect on in a moment like this when we talk about lifetime achievement? It isn't budgets. It isn't tax rates. It isn't any particular piece of legislation, although I've, I've been part of many important pieces of legislation over the years. It isn't about this election or the next election. I really think what I think about now is the continuing existence of small d democratic government. Will it survive? This has been an experiment, a 250, almost a 250 year experiment in democracy. And there have been other nations from ancient Rome till the modern day that has tried to do the same thing. And, and we're in a constant battle to determine whether we can solve the problems that are before us and convince people that democracy is the best way to go. Every cycle we face divisive public policies. In my life, Vietnam in the 1960s, Watergate in the 1970s. We faced 9-11, stock market crashes. We've had natural disasters and now COVID. And every time we found a way to come together. It feels different today than when I started out in public office. It seems that people only believe the information that they want to believe, the information that supports whatever their predetermined view is. If things don't work out your way, it was rigged or it was fixed or there was some devious forces behind the, the outcome. The people that we disagree with, we've come to see them as our enemies, not as our compatriots who just have different views. And we can work through those disagreements. We distrust the media. We distrust the government. We distrust the, distrust the educational system. We distrust provable truths. We assert that they're lies. And to rebuild that confidence is, is very, very hard. It's almost impossible in some ways, but we have to try. And we have to try at every level of government and at every level of our activities in a county and a town, every bit as much as we have to do in the state and the nation. History teaches us that we came close in the 1930s in this country, as much of Europe did, to embrace that lure of tyranny. But we stepped back from the abyss. Will we do so again? We will if people all across the spectrum, from progressives and liberals and moderates and conservatives, begin to see each other as people first. That's what Shelley alluded to. We're people first. Not our party affiliation, not our ideology, not our demographics, but we're human beings sharing this same patch of life at the same exact time. We can have differing ideas. We can feel passionately about those ideas, but we have to have a common commitment to the future that we all share. What's the alternative? The alternative is, is disagreement that leads to violence, that leads to chaos, that leads to a long, dark night. There's no way that we can afford to continue to slide down that slope. I believe, as many of us do, we wouldn't be here tonight. I believe that our best days are still ahead of us. I believe that we have the opportunity to step back once again from the abyss. But if we govern our towns, if we govern our counties, if we govern our state and our nation with some humility, some forbearance, some sense of perseverance, where, where it is not ego-driven, but it's driven around a longer-term view, then we have that chance to step back and then to solve the problems, which are not easy to do, but to address them in a way that's appropriate. I believe we're going to rise to this moment the same way that we did in 1940, the same way that we did in 1860, the same way that we did in 1780. And, and when we do that, when this generation does that, we'll earn the title to be called our grandparents' grandchildren. It, it is the ultimate achievement of the generation that I'm a member of, my generation. That's our lifetime achievement that we seek. 
And I'm very honored to have this opportunity to share those thoughts with you and to continue to work alongside so many wonderful, talented people in the state, in government, and outside of government.